Hey everybody, welcome back to the Reclamation Podcast, where our goal is to help you reclaim good practices for following Jesus. And we haven't met yet, my name is Tony, and I'm your host. With over a decade in the local church, I care deeply and passionately about helping you connect with Jesus in practical ways. Today's conversation kicks off a brand new series all about Lent. That's right, Lent, L-E-N-T. Now, if this conversation is helpful to you, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button wherever you listen to podcasts, leave a rating or review on iTunes or Spotify, and the highest compliment you can give us, share this episode with a friend. And maybe somebody you know who's processing what Lent, what Lent means. Okay, so let's, let's get into Lent a little bit. The first thing you need to know is you're not going to find Lent in the Bible. It's part of what we call the historic faith the church's liturgical calendar. Now, I grew up Catholic, as some of you know, and I love the liturgical calendar because it reminds me of rhythms, right? And rhythms are good reminders, right? Good rhythms are good reminders, right? Think about the things in your life that are rhythmatic. Sleep is a rhythm. Uh, Exercise, hopefully a rhythm. Being in the word daily, a rhythm, right? It's a rhythm that reminds us to posture and change our hearts. And Lent is modeled off of the time that we see Jesus in the wilderness in scripture, right? It says that Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. And that's such an interesting thought because oftentimes we don't very much equate hard seasons to being led by the Spirit. What I believe is, I believe that sometimes we need to put ourselves in hard seasons so we can learn how to become dependent on God. And Lent, at its core, is to designed to do just that. Lent is a good rhythm that reminds us of something. It reminds us of where we've been, and it reminds us of what God has done. Lent reminds us of where we've been, And it reminds us of what God has done. Now, if you celebrate Lent, then you know that it's 40 days that begins, um, you know, kind of mid to late February, and it takes us all the way up to Easter. It starts on Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday is when some churches take ashes and they put us on our foreheads and the sign of the cross. And ashes are such an interesting thought process, right? It, It comes from Genesis 319. It says, by the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you're return to the ground since from it you were taken for dust you are and dust you are you will return for dust you are and to dust you will return so here's the thing about ashes ashes aren't about the pain they are about the promise ashes aren't about the pain they're about the promise right and we can look at those scripture in genesis 3:19 and we can say for dust you are and to dust you all, you will return. What's interesting about this text is that in the text, we are actually in the narrative, right? They're talking to us. It's about what happened before and it's about what happened after, right? It talks about this idea that we are connected to a much larger thought process of both sin and grace, right? The sin is what happened before Adam named his wife Eve because she would become the mother of all living things, right? This is the the curse. This is the fall. That's what sin, that's what was, right? And life goes on afterwards. And so what does all this have to do with the imposition of ashes and Lent? Well, it's a reminder that there is sin, that you have sinned, that I have sinned, and yet there is still grace, From ashes you have come, to ashes you will return. The truth is, friends, that God doesn't want to condemn you. God wants to carry you, just like he did to Jesus in the wilderness. He was there, and he ministered to him, and he showed him what it means to be dependent. And from Jesus' time in the wilderness, he begins to preach and proclaim the gospel. The very first message that Jesus preached outside of the wilderness is repent and believe. God doesn't want to condemn you. He wants to to carry you. But this requires something of us. 
right? In, in order to let God carry us, we must do what Jesus suggested. We must repent, right? In, in order to return to the fullness of life with Christ, we must repent in the present. Lent, at its very core, is a time for us to be reminded that we need dependence on God, and that dependence comes after repentance. Remember, ashes and Lent, it's not about the pain. It's, a, it's about the promise, and the promise is Jesus. Amen? Right? Everything after the moment of sin in Scripture is about God searching for you. It's about God pursuing you. It's about God chasing you. Look, and I don't know what season of life you're in, but I know that you've sinned. I've sinned, right? I I struggle with sin as much as anyone does, just like I'm sure you do. God knows that. God knows that he sinned, that you've sinned, that I've sinned, that we've all sinned, and he still wants us. God chooses you. God's pursuing you. God literally sacrificed part of himself for you. You know, and I think for me, this is what makes Lent such a promising season. Sometimes uh, some people that know me will say I'm just a little bit um, dramatic about it. But the truth is, is that I need a God. I need to be reminded of a God that knows my sins and loves me anyway. So, for the next couple of weeks, we're going to be diving into the season of Lent about what it means and some practices that are good for Lent. We're going to talk about prayer. We're going to talk about fasting. We're going to talk about the posture of our heart and almsgiving and some of these things that we do in Lent as a way to remind ourselves that we are dependent on who God is. So if you're ready to jump on this journey with me, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Next week, we're going to jump into the idea of fasting And fasting has long been a part of Lent. We'll talk a little bit about the scripture where Jesus was ministered by angels in the wilderness. We'll talk about why it matters and why it matters for us today. Don't miss this opportunity to lean in to something different, church. If you didn't grow up in a liturgical community, um, this can be such a tremendous gift to posture your heart. And if you did grow up in a liturgical community, This might be just the push you need to take it a little bit more serious. Friends, as always, I'm super thankful for each and every one of you to to be a part of this community and more than anything, to give me the opportunity to talk about the things that I love. So guys, we'll see you next week as we continue our Lenten series. And remember, if you want to follow Jesus, you must be willing to move.